Hello, hello. Welcome to Who Wore It Best, Jersey Royale. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Kaylee Krish. If you're a regular to the show, you're the real MVP. And if you're new, well, it is time to get you hooked. Each week, we take a number and dive into the greatest athletes to ever wear that number. Once we've broken down the athletes' careers and what makes them so great, then I will use my thinking cap and come up with who wore it best. Now, this week, we have a number that has produced a lot of greats. So much so, we are going to spend two whole episodes on this number. We've got greats from hockey to baseball, NBA, and football to football. So, without further ado, let's reveal this week's Who Wore It Best number that will be battling it out for the first of two titles. It is number seven. Like I said, we could spend hours upon hours on athletes that wore lucky number seven, but ain't nobody got time for that. So this week, we're gonna go through the top five athletes and away we go. First up on the list, we have number seven, Ivan Pudge Rodriguez. That's right, known as one of the greatest defensive catchers of all time. Pudge had the best caught stealing percentage of any major league catcher at 45.68% versus the league average of just 31%. And get this, he had nine seasons with a caught stealing rate of 50% or better. No other catcher in the past 35 years has been as successful at this aspect of the game. Ridiculous. Pudge made his MLB debut with the Texas Rangers on June 20th, 1991, becoming the youngest player to catch in a major league game that season at just 19 years old. Pudge also immediately established himself as an excellent hitter. In his career, he hit 296 with 2,844 hits, 555 doubles, 311 runs, and 1,332 RBIs. He won six straight Silver Slugger Awards from 94 to 99, and a final one in 2004. In 2003, before heading to the World Series, Pudge was named NLCS MVP after driving in his NLCS record 10th run and scoring twice as the Marlins beat the Cubs in game seven. Must have been an exciting game. That Marlins team would go on to win the World Series and Pudge would get his well-deserved ring. Pudge was a 14-time All-Star, an AL MVP, and he is the all-time leader in Golden Gloves at the catcher position, winning 13 times, consecutively from 92 to 2001, and in 2004, 2006, and 2007, to go along with all of those other badass stats. Rodriguez announced his retirement in 2012. The Texas Rangers signed him to a one-day contract so he could finish where it all started. Love when teams do that. 2007 was a big year for Pudge and the Rangers retired his number seven. And he was elected into the Hall of Fame on his first ballot, receiving 76% of the votes. There you go, folks, Pudge Rodriguez. Now let's move from the field to the ice with number seven, Tim Horton. Now most of y'all are thinking, Tim Horton? I thought that was a beloved Canadian coffee establishment and restaurant. Well, you would be right. It is. But it was started by none other than Tim Horton, a beloved hockey defenseman. Old Timmy played 24 seasons in the NHL, and his first 20 were all with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Playing his first NHL game in 1950, Horton was known for his extreme strength and calmness under pressure. His teammates and opponents alike thought he was one of the strongest men they knew, nicknaming him Superman. And in fact, Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey himself, called Horton the strongest player in hockey. That's quite a compliment coming from Howe. His strength carried into his consistency as well. Between February 1961 and 1968, Horton played 486 consecutive regular season games, which 
remains a Leafs record for consecutive games. Now remember, these guys were not wearing helmets, they had limited pads, and they were throwing each other across the ice. This was a brutal game, so that kind of consistency is impressive. Now, setting another Leafs record in 1962, Horton scored three goals and 13 assists in 12 playoff games. A team record for playoff points by a defenseman. The Leafs would win the cup this year as well, by the way, Horton's first of four. And that playoff record would stick until 1994. Horton even created his own fighting tactic. Instead of boxing and laying guys out, Tim would envelop you in a bear hug, which sounds nice and cozy, but not when he squeezes so hard that it feels like your ribs are gonna pop like toothpicks and then tosses you to the cold hard ice like a bag of sand. Not many wanted to mess with a Horton bear hug. In his career, Tim Horton played 1,445 games, had 115 goals and 403 assists, and was a six-time All-Star. In 1977, Horton was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. In 2016, the Toronto Maple Leafs retired his number seven, and a year later, Horton was part of the first group of players to be named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history by the league itself. And I don't know if you've ever been to a Tim Hortons, but you can absolutely not leave Canada without having yourself some Tim Hortons. I'm pretty sure it's a crime. Plus, there are like 600 of them located in the U.S. alone, so there's really no excuses. All right, moving on to our next greatest player to ever wear the number seven. And we're going to stay with the sport for a little bit here because this number has been really good to the quarterback position in football. First on the list of great QBs to wear this number, Ben Roethlisberger. Big Ben was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers in the first round of the 2004 NFL Draft and spent the next 18 seasons with the team. Ben was known for his backyard football style, playing outside the pocket. Fun fact, Ben grew up idolizing another QB on our list that we'll get to eventually. He won Offensive Rookie of the Year and in 2006 won his first Super Bowl in just his second season at the helm, earning him the title of the youngest quarterback to ever win a Super Bowl. In 2007, Roethlisberger would get the first of his six Pro Bowl appearances, including one in 2011 and four straight from 2014 to 2017. In 2008, on the road to Big Ben's second Super Bowl, he would break the record for most wins by a quarterback in their first five NFL seasons with his 49th victory. In Super Bowl 43, Roethlisberger led the Steelers to one of the more dramatic victories in Super Bowl history. On the first two offensive drives, Big Ben passed for 122 yards on seven of eight passing attempts. Steelers coming in hot. As one point, they would lead the Cardinals 20 to seven, but managed to give it all away and end up trailing Arizona 23 to 20 with two minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. Roethlisberger marched the Steelers 88 yards in eight plays, hooking up with the game MVP Santonio Holmes four times for 73 yards on a drive that included a six yard touchdown pass that put the Steelers ahead with just 35 seconds remaining. Overall that night, good old Ben finished 21 of 30 for 256 yards, one touchdown, and one interception with a passer rating of 93.2. He would see the Super Bowl lights one more time in his career in 2011, but unfortunately would lose to, you guessed it, the Green Bay Packers. Now, let me just say, that game probably took about three years off of my life. So thanks, Ben. Upon his retirement following the 2021 season, the comeback kid was tied for the second most game-winning drives of all time with 53, and the second most game-winning drives, including the playoffs, with 57. In his career, Roethlisberger played 218 games, threw 363 touchdowns, and is currently fifth on the all-time leader in passing yardage list with 56,545 yards. 
Ben Roethlisberger will be eligible for Hall of Fame consideration in 2027. Now, do y'all think that he will make it in his first year of eligibility? I want to know your thoughts, so leave a note in the comments. I want to hear from you guys on that. Now, let's keep rolling with the next quarterback on our list number seven, Joe Theismann. Now, Theismann was an All-American at Notre Dame and was in a tight contention for the Heisman Trophy in his junior year after leading the team to a 10-1 season, ranking number two in the country, and winning the 1971 Cotton Bowl Classic. Theismann set school records for passing yards in a season with 2,429 and touchdowns in a season with 16. He also set a school record for passing yards in a single game with 526 and completions in the game with 33 while playing USC in a torrential downpour in 1970. In his time at Notre Dame, Theismann had a 23-2 record while throwing over 4,000 yards and 31 touchdowns. For these stats, Joe was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 2003. Now, despite being drafted in the first round of the 1971 NFL Draft by the Miami Dolphins and in the 39th round of the MLB Draft by the Minnesota Twins, and this guy's an athlete, Joe actually opted out and signed to the Canadian Football League with the Toronto Argonauts. In his three seasons with Toronto, Theismann put up 40 touchdowns and threw over 6,000 passing yards. In 1974, he was acquired by the Washington Redskins, where he would spend his next 11 seasons. In 1982, Theismann led the Redskins to their first championship in 40 years. He threw two touchdowns, and with the Redskins trailing 17 to 13 in the third quarter, he made arguably the most important defensive play of the game. After his pass was deflected and caused what appeared to be an interception, Theismann himself was able to knock the ball out of the lineman's hands keeping the score close enough for Washington to stick to their run-heavy strategy that would eventually lead to their victory. Hey, they say slow and steady wins the race, right? Joe led his team to a consecutive Super Bowl appearance next year, but the team would fall short on that effort. Now, who knows where Joe Theismann would have finished his career had he not suffered a career-ending leg injury that has been voted as one of the most shocking moments in NFL history. And if you were there to witness it or you have found it on YouTube since then, then you know you cannot unsee that. Now, despite his shortened career, Theismann still holds multiple Washington franchise records, including most career wins by a quarterback with 87, most career passing yards with 25,206, most career passing completions with 2,044, and most career passing attempts with 3,602. He was also NFL MVP in 83, a two-time Pro Bowler, first team All-Pro, and NFL Offensive Player of the Year. Now, last up tonight, from football to football, we will finish it up with number seven, Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, Ronaldo is often considered the best player in the world and widely regarded as one of the greatest players of all time. Oh, how is anyone going to compete with that? We'll see. Ronaldo has won five Ballon d'Or awards, his first at the age of 23 by a record high vote count, and four European Golden Shoes, the most by any European player. He has won 32 trophies in his career, including seven league titles, five UEFA Champions Leagues, and the UEFA European Championship. Ronaldo holds the records for most appearances with 183, goals with 140, and assists with 42 in the Champions League, as well as the most goals in the European Championship with 14, international goals with 118, and joint most international appearances with 196. He is one of the few players to have made over 1,100 professional career appearances 
and has scored over 800 official senior career goals for club and country. And as if all of that wasn't enough, he is the only male player to score five World Cup tournaments. Cristiano Ronaldo is the highest scorer among active footballers in the world currently. His passing ability and vision sets him apart. And his speed? Now his speed is a problem for defenders. A versatile attacker, Ronaldo is capable of playing on either wing as well as through the center of the pitch. And while seemingly right-footed, he is very strong with both feet. In 2003, when Ronaldo signed with Manchester United, he was given the number seven, which had previously been worn by George Best and David Beckham. This became an extra source of motivation to be better than his predecessors. And in 2008, Ronaldo set the club's single season goal record with 33, surpassing George Best's total. Ronaldo scored 42 goals in all competitions during the 2007-2008 season, his most prolific campaign during this time in England. And in the following season, he would score his 100th goal in all competitions for United and had scored against all 19 opposing teams in the Premier League at the time and helped United to win the 2008 FIFA World Cup. Ronaldo continues to set records and push his stats. In 2021, with his return to Manchester United, Ronaldo became the player with the most appearances in the Champions League. He became the first player to score in five consecutive matches of a Champions League campaign for an English club and also surpassed that 800 career goals. Now there is way more to this athlete than I can possibly go over in this episode. For all you Ronaldo fans out there, why don't you go ahead and list some of your favorite moments of his in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And there you have it. The first five players battling it out for the Who Wore It Best crown, part one of this number seven duel. To recap, we've got Pudge Rodriguez, Tim Horton, Ben Roethlisberger, Joe Theismann, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Now remember folks, not everyone's on this list, not in this first episode. I don't want to get yelled at for leaving folks off this list, okay? You can wait to do that until after the second episode, all right? The rest of the greatest players to wear number seven, you'll catch them after the new year. That's right, I'm going to announce the first winner and then I'm gonna leave you with a little holiday cliffhanger. And speaking of holidays, yep, giveaway alert. Oh, I love doing this. I am gifting one person with a $50 Amazon gift card. How will I choose? Well, you remember when I told you all to write in the comments about your favorite Cristiano Ronaldo memory? Well, the best memory will receive that $50 gift card. Yes, yes, I know I am incredibly generous. Thank you for noticing. All right. Get those answers in and the winner will be hearing from me. Now, as for the winner of this part one greatest to wear number seven duel, yeah, I kind of feel like I've already slipped here and given away the answer, so I probably don't need to say it, right? No? Okay, okay, yes, it is Cristiano Ronaldo. He is the first to take the crown in the best to wear number seven. It's hard to deny his greatness when he's considered one of the best in the history of the sport. In 2003, when he signed with Manchester, he signed for 12 million pounds, which is about $14.6 million. That was a record fee for a player of his age. So they already knew he was gonna be a GOAT. Plus, he was voted Sexiest Man Alive in 2012, so what more can you say? There you go. Remember, if you like what you see, give us a follow, share the content, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff that keeps us creating. Tune back in on January 7th for our part two of the Who Wore the Number Seven Best. In the meantime, catch up on all the content you have missed on the Titan Media Collective channel on YouTube. I got my own playlist in there for your binging pleasure. There are already four other episodes on there for you to watch, so get on it. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and see y'all next time.